Okay, so hi guys, we are group six. I am Varshi. I'm Caitlin. I'm Stella. And I'm Samadhi. And our presentation today focuses on sediment plumes, which is a major issue with deep sea mining. So deep sea mining is the process of extracting mineral deposits like copper from the sea floor. In order to retrieve these materials, robotic-like machines are used. During the mining process, the motion of these machines excavating the seafloor creates sediment disturbances and turbidity in the water column. The upheaval of bottom sediments combined with the increased water turbidity generates what is termed as sediment plume. Sediment plumes can cause bethnic habitat destruction, changes in the water column, and a decrease in biodiversity. So humans target the ocean floor for the retrieval of these minerals because they are various valuable rare earth metals that are embedded profoundly in the seafloor. So the deep sea is used pretty much for mineral exploration activities where the extraction of those resourceful minerals is enforcing sediment plumes to extensively influence the flora and the fauna of the deep sea. Sediment plumes will initially occur on the seabed at the source of the mining site. However, it can also occur at the sea surface. The plumes which are created at the seabed from mining techniques are known as near bottom plumes, and those generated through transportation at the sea surface are known as near surface plumes. Both the near bottom plumes and the sea surface plumes can cause extensive damages to a range of sea organisms and the underwater mountain features. So these two different types of plumes can affect different aspects of the marine ecosystem. So the near surface plumes affect the plagiate community by increasing the turbidity of the water column. Increased turbidity can alter biological productivity by allowing bottom nutrient rich sediments to rise to the surface, which can create artificial upwellings. Also increased sedimentation can decrease light penetration and reduce rates of photosynthesis. And that's what's shown in this image on your left hand side of your screen. And the near bottom flumes impact the benthic environment by di directly disrupting seabed habitat. So the picture on the right is illustrating a 26 year old plow tract. So as you can see, the mining equipment that directly alters the sea floor, but also leaves a very long lasting effect. And with only five to 10% of the seafloor being mapped, a lot is still unknown about the benthic community. And this makes the seafloor particularly vulnerable to deep sea mining as we lack the fundamental knowledge of this ecosystem and how mining practices will disrupt it. In addition, multiple classes of organisms are affected by sediment plumes. So in the plagiat community, motile animals are affected by poor water quality, which disrupts their migration patterns and reproductive cycles. In the photic zone, the decreased light penetration impacts the growth rate of plankton, as well as how photosynthetic organisms operate, which can have uh, vast food chain effects. In the benthic community, sea floor dwelling organisms not only face habitat destruction, but also mortality via smothering or burial. Additionally, these organisms can be physically removed from their environment. And this is actually illustrated in your bottom center photo. So the mushroom-like looking thing is actually an organism that's being removed from its environment on a uh, metal nodule. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Additionally, uh, particles suspended during mining clog the filter feeding apparatuses of organisms. And these particles also contain toxic metals, which further impacts fil filter feeders. And then in conclusion of the effects, clouded water by plumes Plume sites alters the behavior of benthic organisms by masking bioluminescence, which alters reproductive and predatory actions. Okay, to begin our look at the extent of these sediment plumes, we'll start off by going back to the past. Though deep sea mining is not commercially used yet, many trials were done to test the impacts that mining in the deep seas would have to the local habitats, where much evidence led to the creation of sediment plumes. The method of mining released all of the unwanted particles down into the mid-sea where it was found to scatter a width of 13 to 25 meters away from the drilled hole. Additionally, as you can see from the image to the right, the mined area caused fissures where the accumulation of foreign sediments now spread all through the waters around the hole and down into these cracks, changing the environmental <coughs> sorry, conditions of local communities. And now let's take a journey to the future. With 
our modern technology, scientists have created more advanced models to predict the present and the future if we're not restrictive with deep sea mining, such as the one to our left, which lets us take a closer look of what these mine seabeds actually look like. Marine organisms are also found to be affected the most, where the force of the drilling would cause cracks to widen over time, where suspended particles may get trapped there, accumulating heavy metals into the sea. Not only does this heavy metal get consumed by deep sea creatures, but it travels through the food web, impacting other organisms as well. If this continues, up to 80% of the entire targeted sites will become heavily polluted, leaving marine creatures to suffer. So because, as Stella mentioned, commercial mining hasn't really begun yet, a lot of the work now is on research, developing regulations, and designing technology. There's a lot of uncertainty about deep sea mining, so research on species and sediment plumes are required. And this can be done through monitoring devices or models, such as the brittle star detection model shown here. Environmental impact assessments also determine risks and impacts prior to project approval, and they must consider impacts to not just one mine site, but the entire region. So this figure on the right discusses approaches to regulate deep sea mining, including EIAs and monitoring, but it also goes into some policies and regulations that I'll go to more in the next slide. The International Seabed Authority is currently developing international regulations and agreements for uh, deep sea mining because a lot of these resources are in international waters. These policies include regulating equipment design, amount of activity that's allowed, mining processes, and environmental liability and remediation. There hasn't been enough technology developed yet for commercial mining, but there are a few suggestions for when it occurs. The wastewater can be deposited onto the seabed or as close to the seabed as possible so that fewer water layers are affected. And some seabed patches can be left intact with their organisms and minerals to preserve biodiversity. And finally, we need innovative designs of mining vehicles that can reduce compaction of the sea floor, as well as waste disposal methods to reduce the toxicity of wastes. So in conclusion, sediment plumes are not currently pervasive, but it can become a greater problem in the near future. There are several studies still being conducted to figure out how far sediment plumes can travel in the oceans. There are also ongoing research on other potential threats such as respiratory distress caused by sediment plumes. Therefore, detailed policies and innovative technologies are required prior to commercial deep sea mining. Thank you for listening. <laughs>